Hi everyone, and welcome to another Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta with Repo Products. Our screencast today will cover Revit 2017 and how to look at heating and cooling loads for calculation purposes. I have a Revit model open. In the Analyze tab of the ribbon, there is a Reports and Schedules panel. In here, there is a command for heating and cooling loads. When you start the command, the heating and cooling loads window will open up you'll get a 3D model view of all of the spaces that you have in your Revit model. You'll also get the General tab and the Details tab to help you get things set up properly. So the procedure really is this. You build your Revit model, you put in all your spaces, you set up all your zones, and you make sure all your spaces are set up properly in regards to them being confined with length, width, height, boundaries, uh, the bottom of it, the top of it, things like that, and also the type of space it is. Once you think you have it set up properly and you run this command, you want to get into the general tab, and in here you can specify the building type. So if I click inside here, I can pick what kind of building type to work with. Let's say, for example, that's a school or university. The property information about school or university, by the way, um, the defining parametric information about it is actually not here in this healing and cooling loads window. Um, let me click save settings. It's actually under the manage tab of the ribbon and head over to MEP settings and click building space type settings. Here you can see for example uh, fire station. Here's data, the BIM data that it's looking at. Uh, performing arts theater, museum. So anytime you pick any one of these choices this data will change and in here you can specify whatever the values need to be. You can also get into things like occupancy schedule. How often is it up? Is it 24 hours a day? Is it 6 days a week? Is it a 9 to 5 kind of situation? These are all the BIM pieces of data you need to input. And so that's the building space type. So back here under analyze tab under heating and cooling loads command that's what that means when you're hitting building type. Uh, location is pretty self-explanatory. You're actually telling the software where on the planet does this project actually reside. So if you click inside, it'll open up your web browser interface to location and weather and satellite. And you can go ahead and put in any address that you want for where your project sits. So let's say we put in uh, Singapore. So there's Singapore. You can zoom in if you need to. And move your mouse uh, and there's that little house icon that icon is where your project sits so you can actually click and drag and put it where you want it'll find the uh, coordinates and you'll also notice that it'll find the closest weather satellite station and it will use that particular data hit OK and then you're back here so again go through each one of these topics and each one of these sections to understand what the parameters are for your heating and cooling load. Click Details tab and make sure that you expand and take a look at all of the spaces that you have to work with. There are a couple commands to help you see things like, for example, if I pick this 6019 plenum, I can click Isolate and it'll only show me that particular space. Um, and if I click Highlight, it'll highlight as well. So let's try to find one that we can see, say, for example, that. Uh, if you see under the details tab exclamations, that basically means there's something wrong. So when you select it and you click this warnings icon, it'll pop up the warning and it'll tell you whether the space is placed, whether it's placed properly, uh, so on and so forth. So you've got to go through your Revit model and ensure all of your spaces are set up properly uh, and you have no more uh, yellow exclamation warnings. If all of that is good, Again, you can go into each one of the highlighted spaces that you've selected and pick the building space type, the construction type, the people, and the electrical load data, which you can click these little dots and actually input values outside the defaults as well. When all of this information is correct and you click Calculate, the software will run through its processes and create a load heating and cooling load analysis report and say view. That view is on your Revit model 
and it's listed in the project browser and as soon as this is finished we'll take a look at it. Now depending on how complex your Revit model is how many spaces you have and all the data that has been defined will dictate how long this will take as well as the specifications on your uh, machine that you're working with. So the report comes up and it's categorized under reports. It's called load reports and it's just called load report one. And the more load uh, heating and cooling load uh, analyses that you do, the more load reports that will pop up. And so you can see it has project summary, building summary, zone summary. You can scroll down further, get into all the spaces. You can pick any one of the links and it'll take you directly to that particular space and give you the data uh, that's being recorded uh, for that heating and cooling load report. And that's it. That's how you use the heating and cooling load command to generate a report within Revit. Thank you very much for watching.